we did try a sort of softer touch on this. The data is really quite clear that when you add women uh, to your boards of directors, particularly uh, three or more women, the companies are more profitable. They're more productive. They're better innovators. They have better governance policies. So in 2013, I authored a resolution urging California's uh, companies, uh, publicly traded companies, to add more women to their boards. Uh, we really got n no positive response. So this year, I introduced a bill that does require that uh, these uh, publicly traded California-based companies will be required to add a woman to their board if they have none now. A board of five or more will have to add a position or have at least one of the five members of the board uh, be a woman by the end of uh, 2019 and then to add more women going forward. And of course, um, as you say, it, Urging is a better approach than requiring, right. but we had no success yeah. when we tried to do it politely. So now we're just basically saying uh, to be more competitive, to be more successful, you're going to have to add women to your to your boards. Right. Uh, the, the devil's advocate, you'd say, uh, we want true gender uh, blindness, and and a company should be able to just find the best person looking around and, to, and perhaps, you know, think of a, just a, a situation where, wow, I really have found someone that I want. Unfortunately, it's the wrong sex here. And, I, and I've got to, all of a sudden, in my calculus, that has to be mandated by the state that I do that. And that's where you start thinking, I, I mean, eventually, do we want 50% women should, I mean, true gender equality should be 50% should be, uh, board members should be women on, on a board. Is that, is that, eventually where we go? Well, I think at this point in time, what we're looking for is a, the critical mass of women on corporate boards. So we reflect that diversity. Women are, 52% uh, of women are in the workforce right. today. No, and women represent 70% of the consumers. So clearly for businesses to be uh, more profitable and more successful, adding the voice of 70% of the consumers of your products or services would make sense. But what we've found is that companies really don't want to go far from what right. they're comfortable with. Boards of directors want to find people who think like them, who act like them, who they're familiar with, who they like. And what we found is, unfortunately, that has been men limiting S access Senator, to what is out there, a very qualified group of people who would love to serve on these boards. Senator, how do you do it outside of the board and at the level of management, which is where I think ultimately you, you want to go, and I, I imagine where you probably need to go, there is no direct connection thus far uh, between the number of women on boards and the leadership from a management perspective. And how do you either create that connection or, or, or do you actually have to try to incentivize this at the management level? Well, what we do find is that when you have women on corporate boards, uh, they tend to find uh, and be interested in bringing women into management positions. Again, uh, when it's an all-male board, there's a real reluctance to look outside, if you will, their comfort zone, the traditional box, uh, for non-male uh, leadership. And when you have women in these positions of power and influence on corporate boards, they tend to be the ones that are willing to look to women for leadership. And we know uh, there are registries out there with women who not only are competent to serve on boards, but also competent to serve in leadership positions as CEOs and upper management positions. They're there. Uh, it's just that uh, currently, without requiring that we look for them, uh, the male-dominated boards or the male-only boards are just unwilling to, to take right. that step to find them.